What's up guys, welcome back to another review of WandaVision and today we are reviewing the season finale or the series finale more fitting as the episode is called the series final. So yes, yeah, so this is the final episode of the show. It's all been le leading and building up to this. We've been anticipating it for, for a very long time and we're finally here and you know straight up I'll, I'll say right now that I was a bit disappointed by by this episode. It wasn't bad by any means necessary. It wasn't bad or awful. It was still good, but you know, there were a couple things that were disappointing or were let down or just kind of just confusing also. So, and I'll, I'll get into that. So, yeah, so let's just get into the episode quickly now. So, of course, if it starts off where we left off last week, where of course Agatha has like her Wanda's two kids, Bill and Tommy trapped a bit, and then Wanda starts to fight with Ag Agatha. Mostly this episode is a big fight sequence almost, so honestly, and so she fights Agatha, and then the white vision comes into the dome, the real vision, and of course, as we know, he's able to get into the dome because they use some of Wanda's powers to get him to come online. And when Wanda sees him, she's like, Vision, is that you? Like, the real you? And she goes to him, and at first it seems quite fine, because he puts his hand on her face and such, but then he starts squeezing her head and such, so, and, like, throws her in crap, so, not, of course, he doesn't rem rem remember everything. And then the fake Vision comes in, saves Wanda, and starts fighting the white Vision, and, of course, also, it's very reminiscent of the comics, because I was right as a, I was, I now learned exactly what white Vision was since last week, uh, I was basically right, so... At some point in the comics, Vision got destroyed, I'm not exactly sure how still, but he got, he got destroyed at one point, and a couple people, including Hank Pym, rebuilt his body into this white body, and when Wanda first, first sees White Vision in the comics, she runs up to him and kisses him, saying, oh my god, Vision, you're back. And then she's like, Vision, what, what, what's going on here? But then, like, as of course now, he's, he's more, he's more robot than the human now, he's like almost entirely a robot now, so that's basically what this white vision is now. He's a, a completely a robot, has no actual emotion or empathy towards Wanda or people at all. So that's what that scene was that it was very reminiscent of when Wanda first sees the white vision in, in the episode. And of course, also the, the fake vision now, like he sees Wanda and tells her, you know, I, and says, I, he's no longer mad at her, he now understands why she did what she did, and that he says, let's fight for our home and such. So now he starts fighting White Vision, and Wanda keeps fighting Agatha. And like I said, the big fight sequence is basically the episode is, and it, it's very fun and entertaining. Vision and Vision fighting. <laughs> Vision and Vision sounds like a, a sitcom in and of itself. Vision and Vision. One's an android, and the, and the other one's also an android, but the other one's not actually real, so... <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but yeah, so their fight sequence is quite cool, seeing like, them do their different abilities on each other. It, it was really cool and fun to see. And so Wanda and Agatha, they're fighting, of course, and Agatha keeps re revealing some more stuff to Wanda, like she now shows off the Darkhold book, which we all speculated that's what it was in the last episode we saw it in, or two episodes, episodes ago. And of course, also, she says how, Wanda, you're more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme, so she's, like, the most, they're saying how she's, like, the most powerful character, or one of the most powerful characters in the universe. And also, you know, uh, what am I going to say now? Shoot, and also Darkhold, of course, like I said, that was a, like we said, we speculated that was going to be Darkhold, and it's like, there was a Darkhold also in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but it's not the same one, so it's them more so saying that, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't really count in the continuity of the MCU, so that sucks, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, so everyone, they keep fighting and such, and Wanda and Agatha, they keep fighting, and at some point, Agatha then unlocks the minds of all the people in Westview, and they start confronting Wanda, and they start telling her stuff like, you know, like, I beg you, like, let my daughter out of her room so I can see her again. And, like, oh, like, you control us. Like, what the heck? Like, this is, no, they're all mad at her and such. And then Wanda starts going out of control a bit and accidentally uses her power to start choking them all. And she, like, stops and realizes that, you know, actually this, this is not good at all what I'm doing. So then she opens the dome up and lets them all run free and such. But, of course, as the dome opens up, Vision and her two kids start to disappear. So this now confirms also that if the dome disappears, so will also Billy and Tommy. So they're not quite real also like Vision. So she closed the dome again once everyone is freed. So Vision, Billy, and Tommy are all fine now. But also Hayward and his men managed to get inside the dome before, you know, before she closes it again. And so, of course, the fight continues, you know, Vision keeps fighting, White Vision, Wanda keeps fighting, Agatha, and such, and Billy and Tommy start fighting Hayward and his men, and, and they did, which is a quite fun scene. And they almost get shot by Hayward's men, but then Monica shows up quickly the last second to save them, and we start seeing more of her powers, which she can manage to have bullets phase through her and, like, kind of be destroyed, I guess, so... I'm not, really I'm not really quite sure what exactly her powers are in the comics, I always thought her powers were just 
similar to Captain Marvel's where she has flight, super strength, energy blast, which I'm pretty sure she has all that, but, you know, but she clearly, clearly has more than just that, so there's that. And as the episode keeps going on, you know, Vision and White Vision keep fighting, and the fake Vision starts asking Vision, the White Vision, <laughs> it's just so confusing to say, he starts asking him, like, what, what's your deal, what are, you, what are you about, and he tells him, my prime directive is to kill the, the Vision, and the fake Vision's like, well, that doesn't make sense, because I'm not even technically real, I'm not the real Vision, you're the real Vision, so... Your own prime directive is kind of very, doesn't really add up there. And then start, and they have a really fun and like cool conversation where they're talking about such and how, you know, Vision doesn't, how he doesn't have any memories and such and like he, a bunch of other things and he tells him, fake Vision tells White Vision how, you know, you're an android and you're real so that means you, you don't, you haven't lost your memories, they're more so just it's laying dormant in the back of your head so he taps into White Vision and he unlocks all his memories so now Vision rem remembers everything, so he remembers Wanda, and, and the Avengers, and Thanos, he remembers everything now, and he's like, I know who I am now, I am Vision, and he just flies off and leaves, so, and that was it, he doesn't, just leaves, which I'll get into that also with the other things I want to get into about the episode, so, there's all that. So Wanda and Agatha, they keep fighting, and then Wanda does the same, does, does to Agatha what she did to the Avengers during Age of Ultron, she makes her see a nightmare, which is of her, the witch, her witch cultist, like, you know, but about the killer at the stake. But in her nightmare, I guess, Agatha starts, is able to control the nightmares and has her witch cultist, like, hallucinations start attacking Wanda, going, oh, you're the Scarlet Witch, you're much more dangerous. So they start attacking her and, and tying her up at the stake and such. So I think she has control over that nightmare, Agatha, or maybe just Wanda's presence there is too strong, so they just start attacking her. I'm pretty sure Agatha has control over the nightmare. But then Wanda breaks three, and then they get... Uh, they kick the, them both out of the nightmare, and they start fighting in the sky, and they start fighting, and she starts, just keeps, like, shooting energy blasts and projections at Agatha, which is not smart on her part, because doing that is allowing Agatha to drain her power and to gain her abilities and such, and by the end of the fight, you know, she's drained all her power now, and Wanda starts looking like how the witch cultists did back in the day. She's now her skin's starting to get, like, you know, wrinkly and frail and, like, losing the color to it, so, like, she's starting to lose her power and such. Now Agatha's like, I now have the powers of the Scarlet Witch. I'm the most powerful person here now. <laughs> and she's about to use them again on Wanda to kill her, but then Wanda pulls a Uno Reverse card. Like, well, it's not really an Uno Reverse card, but she does pull a, a, a trickaroo on her, where she reveals that she cast that same spell she that Agatha cast on her in her house, where she put those uh, so sigils on the wall that prevented uh, that only allowed the witch who cast those sigils to use her powers, and the other um, witch or magic user can't use their abilities while those are cast. So Wanda does the same to her. She learned the spell from her, and now only Wanda can use her powers, and she can't. So Wanda then gets her powers back that Agatha was stealing from her, and then she finally unlocks her true potential as a Scarlet Witch her full potential, and then gains her costume, her comic accurate costume, she finally has it, and she defeats Agatha, and Agatha's like, Agatha's like okay, just take to kill me then, and she's like, oh, I'm not gonna kill you, I'm just gonna trap you here forever now, as the role you chose for my show, which is Agnes, the, the noisy neighbor, so she now just turns her back into Agnes, her, like, role in the show, and she's now permanently trapped here as Agnes, so, yeah, so they left the door open for her to come back now, potentially, either in Multiverse of Madness, or some other MCU storyline they want to, but yes, yeah, she, has, she has the potential to show up again at some point now. So then, of course, Wanda, Vision, their kids, you know, after they, they defeat everybody, now they go back home, and Wanda's now fully realized that, you know what, um, this is not right to have this dome up and such, I'm going to just take it down now, it's not right. So she starts slowly, it starts slowly clo closing back in around her, and they go back home, and like, and her and Vision say goodnight to Billy and Tommy, they tuck them in and such, and she tells them, you know, thanks for choosing me as your mother. And they close the door and say goodbye. So it's a very sweet and touching scene. And then she says goodbye to Vision, and he tells Vision asks, what exactly was I? And she's like, you know, you were a part of the Mind Stone that was inside me that I used to create you. So that's the explanation for that. And they, they have a lovely, a lovely scene saying goodbye, and it's quite tender and sweet. And then finally the dome closes it in around them, and finally Vision, the kids, and the house all come apart. They're no longer there. And now Westview is finally free of Wanda's control, and Wanda starts leaving, of course, and everyone's now still giving her dirty looks like, ooh, you. And her and Monica also make peace, they're on good terms, and Wanda, you know, leaves Westview, Westview for good now, and that's the episode.
But of course, it's not quite the end, though, because there are two after credits scenes, so Marvel did pull, put two after credits in this time in the episode, so it always pays to stay through the entirety of all the credits when it comes to Marvel. So the first one, very simple, is basically, you know, Jimmy and Monica are now handling the situation in Westview. You know, they're getting everything under control. They're arresting Hayward, so that's great. And then someone tells Monica there's someone who wants to meet you inside the theater. So she goes inside the theater, but this person who wanted to meet her was that agent agent person who just came to talk to Monica, tell her if someone wants to meet and meet you inside the theater. And she reveals that she's a scroll and tells her that I'm an old friend kind of your mom's and such. And tells her that someone wants to meet you up there, up in space. So which I think means either Carol Danvers or Nick Fury even, because of course there was Spider-Man Far From Home after credit scene with Nick Fury up in space with the Skrulls. So it's potentially either one of those two things. I think it's more than likely Captain Marvel, or it could be Nick Fury, I don't know, because we know Monica will be in Captain Marvel 2. So it's either one of those two things, but that's a cool after credit scene. And then the final one, of course, is that we're somewhere far away off in the mountainside, in the peaks, and Wanda's just, just in a small little cabin, just like by herself, you know, drink, drinking some cocoa, just living a very calm and secluded life now. But then we go inside the house to see that, you know, that's a projection she's made, and the real Wanda's in her back room in full Scarlet Witch attire, like, like using the dark hole and reading from it and, like, learning spells and such. And she hears the, the screams and cries of her children, and so she then, the episode then cuts to black and end. So, I think she's using the dark hole to, like, try and recreate her children to actually make them real and, and actually stick around in the real world, so I think that's what's happening there, so that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, that was the entirety of the episode, and, and of course, there are things I forgot, I forgot to mention, but I'm gonna get into them right now, so so mostly, why did I exactly not like this episode that much? Like, it's disappointing for a couple reasons. Cause first off, one major thing I was left down by was the Evan Peters explanation, so they finally explained what the deal is with Evan Peters. We all thought he was X-Men Quicksilver. He's not, not at all. It just turns out he's some random guy named Ralph Boner, who is an actor that was hired by Agatha to play Quicksilver. So that's great. That's terrific. That's what we all wanted. So like, I I had a fear that that was what they were going to do. Be like, oh, I just conveniently looks like Evan Peters. But I'm like, no, you wouldn't just cast him it, Evan Peters for that alone. There has to be some multiverse explanation. Nope, just, it just looks, happens to look like X-Men Quicksilver, which is so annoying. Like, just, it's, uh, and I, Agatha gave him his powers through a necklace, I, th I think, and like, Monica easily defeats him. And also annoying, they said the day before this episode came out that you're going to see a, a lot more Quicksilver in the episode. He's, like, barely in it, so what the hell was the point of saying that? Like, I just cannot believe, like, I can't believe Marvel did that. They knew full well casting him would lead to this kind of disappointment by fans. Like, I, I don't think... Are they really surprised people are mad about that? Because, like, everyone knows, like, Doctor Strange 2 is dealing with the multiverse. Spider-Man 3 is heavily also going to have the multiverse in it. So, like, we, what were they expecting was going to happen when you bring in Evan Peters, who played Quicksilver in another movie franchise entirely? What, what do you think was going to happen by bringing him in and all of a sudden saying, oh, it just conveniently looks like Evan Peters. Like, okay, that's a little disappointing there. A lot disappointing, honestly. It's very, it's very annoying that. Uh, but that's not the only thing that's annoying about the episode. Uh, there's a couple other things also annoying. For, for one thing also, there's no actual big Luke Skywalker level cameo reveal in the episode either. So, what? And there's no other actor in the episode that Paul Bettany teased that he always wanted to work with his entire life. Apparently he was just trolling everybody because the actor he was talked about in question was himself because he plays two versions of Vision. Like what? What's the point? Why are you being a troll like that to your fans? Like what? I don't get the point of doing that because now again you get people's expectations up because they've been setting this up. They've been teasing this almost like half the entire series. I think by episode three they were teasing this that there was some big cameo coming up in the show, like some real big cameo. But there is no cameo whatsoever, which I don't get. Like, what? why say that stuff at all if, if it's not even true? It's like, again, you just make your fans upset like I am right now and just disappoint them. So, like, I, I just don't get what was the point of that. And other things that just confused me also, like, White Vision, he up and leaves. What? Why? Where'd he go? Like, I, I, you think as soon as, like, he has his memories unlocked, he'd go and help 
Wanda or something, or Gojo or immediately, but he just doesn't. He goes away. I mean, I'm glad he's alive still. He's on. I'm glad they kept him alive because that means he's now in the MCU like for good for a while now. So they're they're gonna do some, something with him again now, and I'm excited to see where he goes now because now for the first time, Vision's not like clutched on the Infinity Saga plotline because like I, said, I think I said in one of the prior reviews, my problem with Vision in the films was that. As soon as he was introduced in Age of Ultron, he was a plot point. Because he had the Mind Stone in his head, you're like, well, he's going to die in Infinity War then, because how else is the Thanos going to get that stone out of his head? He's going to die. And, like, there was there was that film, Civil War, which he was had time to be a character, but then Infinity War comes around, and he's just a plot point. So that was my problem with him the whole t a lot of the time. But now that he's actually out in the world, but run by, not by the Mind Stone, by something else, like, he can finally probably grow, I think, as a character more, so... But still, why did he leave? Like, I don't know why he didn't go straight to Wanda. If he now remembers everything, why did he just up and vanish? So, I don't know. And there's also this other confusing thing. Maybe someone can explain this to me, but... I thought, like, Wanda was going to keep the dome up, because she said she's going to trap Agatha here forever, and she put those runes things, those sigils on the dome itself, trapping her here. But... What? But she takes the dome down, so where is Agatha then? Where Where is she trapped exactly? She can't be... Like, are we implying that just the sigils are around the town itself then? But how is that... I don't... How? I don't get it. Because the, she, she took down the dome where the sigils are on, so what's keeping her here now? I don't... I don't know. Like, what? It's... A, it's several things like that are confusing, and so there's that. Uh, I guess I'll also talk about this, uh, to nobody's surprise, but, or to everyone's surprise, except, except me, I was not surprised, um, Mephisto has no role in the show whatsoever. Everyone's shocked by that, but I'm not, because I never once believed he had a role in the show. Like, never once I believed he could be in the show, and I just never once, like, I just knew, like, all these references we're picking up on are probably just, they're probably just teases, they're not, he's not gonna show up in the show, I was correct, so... Yeah, I just didn't believe it. Like, honestly, by, when Agatha revealed herself, it, like, it made it very clear that, it, guys, Mephisto is not going to be in the show. Like, I, I just don't, I just never saw Mephisto being in the show. So, there's that. And uh, a lot of people were very upset by that because they were dead certain he was going to be in the show and they were not happy about that theory not paying out. I'm not that mad about it because, like I said, I never believed it being with. Uh, but there's other things also, like, for example, also, a lot of the side characters are, like, really just kind of all forgotten about. Like, Monica is in the dome, but she barely does anything when she's there. She de defeats Evan Peters and also saves the kids, but then that's it. And then she has the after credits team, and that's it. Jimmy Woo, like, he does barely anything also. Darcy does l barely anything, actually. He has the worst time in the episode. She literally shows up for a few seconds says one thing, and then never shows up again in the episode. So I'm like, what, where does she go? Like, why is she up and just vanish? Like, she takes out of Hayward, she crashes the truck she was driving into Hayward's car, stopping him from, him from leaving, Like, and then she vanishes. She, has, she says one thing, and then she's gone. She was there for, like, maximum five seconds, maybe. Like, I just don't, I just don't get that. And also, what was with... What was with Jimmy, like, hinting at stuff, like, calling his, like, buddies at Quantico, I think that's what it was called calling his buddy Cliff, and then nothing happened. Like, he calls him for his assistant, so you're assuming that these, this guy Cliff and his friends are going to help Jimmy out with something in the episode, but then nothing happens. Like, you see them show up, but they don't do anything. Like, what was the point of that? I don't... I just don't know. Like, it's... Ugh, oh, man. And the final thing also, Doctor Strange. Like, really, there's no Doctor Strange in the episode. I fought for certain... Like, we were, we were all for certain. That's one that pissed me off, that disappointed me. Like, I thought we we were all dead sure that Doctor Strange was going to show up in some capacity, either as a quick scene during after credit scene, or as a big role in the episode. No appearance whatsoever. And I thought after Agatha, you know, name-dropped the Sorcerer Supreme, I thought, okay, Doctor Strange is going to have to show up soon. Like, she's, she's saying she's more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Freaking Strange. And also, there's all this magical ba battling going on right now between Wanda and Agatha. Like, surely Doctor Strange... Is gonna have to gonna show up now, right? But no, he doesn't. So, which makes you wonder where was he then this whole time during the show? Like, if there's all this magical nonsense, like chaos magic, which is a very big and powerful thing. 
where was he this whole time? What's he been doing around, doing exactly? I can't imagine he's doing much. Is he just sitting on his ass, like eating some stark craving hazelnut or whatever the heck that Iron Man ice cream flavor was called from Ben and Jerry's? Like, what? What's he doing? What's he doing exactly? I don't know. Just and I, I read an article saying that apparently they did film a scene with him. That they decided to cut, and it's, the article, this, there's no actual official confirmation from Marvel or anybody involved in the show that there was Doctor Strange scene filmed, but, I don't know, if, if honestly, there, if there was a scene filmed with him that they cut out, that's even more annoying, because why would you cut that out? We all, you, one is going to be in Doctor Strange 2, why would you cut out a scene that would probably set that up? Like, I don't get it. I mean... So the general audience, they won't even know she's in Doctor Strange too. I mean, they'll look it up later on and probably learn it, but still, like, why is it not a scene that sets it up? It's like, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's kind of dumb to me. Uh, overall, looking at this episode, like, it's, it's honestly, the, it's the most disappointing episode for me in the show. A lot of things were confusing and just didn't live, live up the hype and were just annoying. So, like, it, honestly... At first, the episode was sitting at a 7 out of 10 for me, but now it's kind of sitting at a 6 out of 10. Well, like I said, it's not an awful episode. It's not bad or anything. There's some really nice and touching scenes that the fight sequences are pretty cool. You know, seeing Scarlet Witch in her combo gacker costume is great. You know, the doctor credit scenes are pretty cool. But a lot of confusing things and disappointing stuff with Evan Peters. There's no big massive cameo, no Doctor Strange. Like, where Vision goes, where's Agatha. Like, all these confusing things kind of lower the rain down for me. It's definitely my lowest rate episode of the show, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah. But yeah, that was WandaVision. Uh, so yeah, thank you all for watching these reviews of WandaVision. Overall, the show, uh, the whole show as a, as a overall, looking at the entirety of the show, everything, I would give it a 7 out of 10, which I, I, I gave almost the entirety of all the episodes, like 8s or 9s out of 10, but then this final episode dragged it down to a 6. So... I, I kind of said, all right, you know, I'll, I'll put it in that, like, sweet spot in the middle, 7 out of 10. So it was like, I'm not going to give it straight an 8, or I'm not, not going to give it straight a 6. So it's going to be a 7 out of 10. That's my overall review of the show. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, overall, I thought this was, minus the final episode, this was, and a few other things that were not a fan of. What else was I not a fan of? Not, nothing else, really. Okay. I'm not sure what I'm talking about. Uh, but, yeah. Overall, this was a good show. I think as Marvel Studios' first actual foray into t TV storytelling, it was quite good. So, I'm excited to see where they go from here. I can't wait to see what happens with Wanda and Doctor Strange 2, which, sad fact, we would have had that film in, next, in another two months if it wasn't for 2020. So, that sucks. <laughs> so, yeah, we're not going to get that film for another year still. So... But yeah, I'm excited to see where that film goes. I'm excited to see where the other Marvel shows go as well. Because, of course, in two weeks from now, we're going to get the Falcon Winter Soldier. And I'll also see you all back for that because I will be doing weekly reviews for Falcon Winter Soldier also. So, yes, stay tuned for that. And thank you all for watching. Tell me in the comment section down below, what did you think of the final episode of Law and Vision? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you in the middle of summer thing? It's okay. And what did you think of the show overall? Did you love it or hate it? So, yeah. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys all later for the Falcon Winter Soldier reviews coming in two weeks. So yeah, I'll see you all later. Goodbye.